hi welcome back to my channel it is prophetess ebony evans and i'm so grateful that you are back with us i'm so ready to just dive in on the fifth this is the fifth episode of i am the bride and for those that are new to this series this is a prophetic teaching that the Lord has given me about the Proverbs 31 woman, which is really a letter to the church, which is a letter to the bride of Christ, which is the church itself, the ecclesia of God, the, the summoned ones of God, the elected ones of God, the sitting government of God's body, right? And so this prophetic teaching is a reflection of who we are as godly women and who we are as the church as the bride of christ because the bible says that jesus is coming back for the bride he's coming back for his church and so i'm so grateful that you are here so without further ado let's get started Father God, in the name of Jesus, we lift your name high. We thank you for this opportunity to listen to what you are speaking. Lord, we thank you that you are just blessing our hearts. You're, you're doing a new thing in us in this very moment. And Lord, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. You are the one that we want. You are the one that is worthy of it all. And Lord, I just thank you right now that even now you're quickening our spirits. Even now you're bringing forth fresh revelation. And how do we know this? Because you are the great I am. And Lord, everything we do in this moment will be by faith. We will believe you by faith. We will know you by faith. We will know all things that you are doing in our hearts and in our lives. In Jesus name, we pray, amen. Today's episode is from these two verses, Proverbs 31. And it says, she perceives that her merchandise is good. Her candle goes not out by night. She lays her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. All right, so I'm going to read that in Passion Translation. She tastes and experiences a better substance and her shining light will not be extinguished no matter how dark the night. She stretches out her hands to help the needy and she lays hold to the wills of government. So that first verse in 18, it says she perceives that her merchandise is good. I wanna just share with you the notes that I wrote on this part as the Holy Spirit was giving me revelation. She understands her treasure is worthy of it all. She understands that her merchandise is good. She knows that there is no greater treasure. There is no greater jewels. There is no, nothing that is more worthy or valuable than her living her life for Christ. So when the Bible says she perceives that her merchandise is good, she knows without a shadow of doubt that this is all in all. There is no greater treasure than the treasure of having the Holy Spirit dwell on the inside of her, from walking in the fruit of the Spirit, for knowing that her, her forever home is in heaven. This woman embodies this, and so everything she she does is a reflection of what she knows about herself and so she perceives that her merchandise is good she knows that what the world has to offer cannot even begin to compare to the merchandise that she has purchased through living her life for God. So we know that salvation is free, but obedience will cost us. We know salvation is free, but we must buy and purchase our oil from Jesus, right? Because he is the great merchant. And so she understands that the most valuable thing she can ever do in her life is lay her life down for the gospel. And so that's why in Proverbs 31, 18, it says she perceives that her merchandise is good. And I love the passion translation because it says she's taste and seen a better substance. Listen, what the world was does not compare to what she has experienced so far in Christ. So she's taste and seen a better substance, a better taste. Of, of, she has seen greater 
than what she has ever seen before. So she perceives that this is all in all. She knows that this is the greatest attribute of her life. This is her life to walk in the likeness of her God and to live for him. The next part says, her candle goes not out by night. Now I love this because if though if you follow me and, and you're on my YouTube channel, you follow me on Instagram, you know that the prophetic word that the Lord gave me for the entire year 2022 that he told me to release was burned continually. And really that's just a message of understanding that we are called to be continually filled with the spirit we are called to have enough oil in our lamps so that means that we must be in a state of continual production we must be continually producing oil for our lamps and we must be continually filled with the spirit of the living god and so when that scripture says her candle goes not out by night why does her candle not go out in other words her lamp right her lamp does not go out. The light that she needs will never run out. So even when it is dark, she will still be in the light. So really, this is what God gave me about that. It says, this speaks to the fact that this bride or this woman, this church, continually produces oil for her lamp. Therefore, it will not go out. So when trouble comes, she will not fear for she will still walk in the light her lamp is also her prayer life the lamp is the vessel that houses the oil of god the lamp is the vessel that houses the oil of god we are required to produce we are required to required to purchase this oil so the reason why this bride the reason why this woman the reason why this church lamp does not go out is because they are continually pouring up and storing oil and what does oil represents it represents the anointing of god it represents the holy spirit it represents the anointing the oil it represents god himself and so what happens is these are people these are women this is a church that really lays down her life for god daily this is not just something to do this is who she is so her lamp will never go out at night she will always have light even when tough times hit her life or even when things or circumstances come trying to rock her and knock her off her feet she will still have light in her life because she has a prayer life because she fasts she prays in other words she seeks the face of god verse 19 says she lays her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff so the spindle and distaff was a almost a machine a wooden machine using to weave and to make clothing usually out of flax and wool and so this was always um, a hobby or a job for a woman back back in the day right but it points to so much more because when you're you're doing a distaff and you're doing a spindle you are creating clothing right you're creating clothing for family members for the needy for the poor and so when the bible says she lays her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff so the distaff is where the the thread of the flax and the wool is usually it's the tool that's used to thread it out or create the thread and so that's very interesting right she lays her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff so the spindle is the wheel of the machine and one thing that i noticed in the passion translation it says she lays hold of the wheels of government and so her hands grasp the spindle the word translated as spindle can also mean governmental circuits or wheels and there is a hint of that um, mentioned in Ezekiel 1 where it talks about the throne of God's government sits on flaming wheels and that's also in Daniel 7 9 and so what I really believe God is showing us and revealing to us about this is she lays her hands to the spindle 
she lays her hands to the government to the inner workings of the government now this does not mean that this woman or this bride this this church um and remember there's only one bride of christ right there are not many brides of christ there's only one bride of christ but we know that that is the entire church of god right and so when it talks about she lays her hands to the spindle i believe wholeheartedly that the lord is revealing to us that this is someone who embodies the government in other words they are praying and interceding they do not just look at what's going on in their lives and their children in in their home but they are looking at the world from a heavenly perspective and they are not dormant in their intercession for they pray in the spirit for the government they intercede on behalf as a representative of christ and they are showing up in the spirit realm through prayer, through fasting. And they are demanding that the decrees and the laws of God be in effect. They're demanding that the promises of God prevail. They're demanding that God's way will be in the earth. They're not just looking at, it, at the news like, oh, oh, well. Look at what's happening here. Look what's happening in Afghanistan. Look what's happening in Nigeria. Oh, look what's going on in America. Oh, well, I'm just waiting on Jesus to come back. No, they understand the authority that has been delegated to them as children of God. And they understand that they, they rule and they sit in dominion. They understand that the same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in them. And so they start putting their hands to the spindle, to the governmental circuit of the world and they start interceding with the power that they they operate in as children of God. They operate and they 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 don't stand and dormant and they don't lie not doing anything and they don't speak and and they don't speak with a pessimistic spirit but instead they are very active in prayer they are very active in what's going on in the world and they bring this before the throne of grace because they understand that they are operating in the government of god and so i am just blown away at that revelation of long alone it says that she lays her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff this is a woman that is weaving and threading and creating things for the world. She's just like she's going into the heavenlies and she's bringing back fresh clothes, fresh revelations, fre fresh clothing, fresh manna from heaven. And she's understanding this heavenly perspective. And now she's she's intertwining this into her life. She's intertwining this into the earth realm. She's intertwining this. So I think that that is absolutely amazing right well i am enjoying this this is has been a great revelation and i want you to know that th just because we're doing this study does not mean that we're perfect but what what it means is that we understand the standard of living that we've been called to we understand the duty we've been we understand what we've been summoned to do what we what we've been charged to do by jesus we understand what we've been elected to do by god and so this is a time to awake this is a time to arise this is a time to understand that i'm getting ready and i am preparing to do the will of my father and so i'm so excited for those who don't know our april fast starts monday april 4th i am so ready make sure that you sign up for the emails we are going in a much needed intimacy with god a much needed diving into his presence his spirit and just unplugging for the world um, from the world in april and we're going to do this in increments and we are so excited so if you are interested please make sure you sign up at ebonyshaneevans.com and just be on the lookout for more announcements and i cannot wait to see you guys in the next video bye bye